Have you ever wondered if certain foods might cause cancer? You're about to see alarming proof that big food manufacturers are using cancer-causing chemicals in foods most people eat every day. We have a health alert for you this morning that may have you thinking twice about what you eat. It could impact your risk of getting diagnosed with cancer. Peeps candy could cause cancer. Could drinking diet sodas, chewing gum, and eating yogurt lead to cancer? They provide no nutritional value, and many have been linked to cancer. Now, global health bodies are putting aspartame under a microscope, examining a potential new link to cancer. The chemicals in the artificial caramel coloring can cause cancer. Further evidence that highly processed food is leading to higher rates of cancer. Most people are unaware that items like bread, soda, muffins, candy, pizza could be laced with potential cancer-causing chemicals. And the worst part, many of these foods are marketed to children. Millions of pounds of toxic chemicals are hidden in food every year to color, flavor, preserve and sweeten. But sadly, they do a lot more than that, like damage DNA potentially triggering cancer. Food manufacturers are masters of deception, hiding these chemicals behind clever labeling while exploiting regulatory loopholes. But you're about to learn how they do it and what foods to avoid so you can protect your family. And with a staggering one in four people being diagnosed with cancer these days, it's not something to take lightly. This is the story of cancer causing foods. If you're in the business of making highly processed foods from a bunch of low quality cheap ingredients, you're gonna need some help to make your foods look and taste good. Help from a bunch of toxic chemicals that is. The first challenge is creating those bright, eye-popping colors that practically hypnotize children. Which is where the wonder of artificial food colorings come into play. Adding a little color to food might seem harmless, but when you dig a tad deeper, not so much. The first artificial food color was red, made from coal tar in 1856. And you might think we've moved on from those primitive days, but think again. Today, food colors are made from petroleum, a crude oil-based product. The same stuff used to make gasoline, diesel, and tar. Over the years, some of these fake colors caused so much harm, even the likes of the FDA was forced to take action and ban them. In 1950, the FDA allowed 12 milligrams of food dyes per person per day, and in 2010, it was up to 62 milligrams. But it only takes 30 milligrams of food dye to trigger behavioral problems in children. That show, for certain children, hyperactivity and other behavioral problems are exacerbated by food dye. The real concern is a food dye blue number one, which can potentially cross the blood-brain barrier. And what's worse, researchers at Purdue University estimate children consume 100 milligrams of artificial dyes per day, and potentially up to double that. In many countries, there are still six common food dyes used, which are blue one, blue two, red three, red 40, yellow five, and yellow six. The three dyes most consumed are red 40, yellow five, and yellow six, and they contain potentially cancer-causing contaminants of benzodyne, 4-aminobiphenol, and 4-aminoazobenzene. Regulators give them a pass though, claiming they're only in small amounts. But personally, I'm not so keen on any amount of potentially cancer-causing chemicals in my food. Especially when RED3 has been found to cause cancer in animals. One study stated, this review finds that all of the nine currently US approved dyes raise health concerns of varying degrees. RED3 causes cancer in animals. And another study found an increase in the risk of thyroid tumors in rats, stating, RED3 ingestion may promote thyroid tumor formation in rats. Because of this, the FDA issued a partial ban on RED3 in 1990. But then they changed their minds and lifted the ban because, well, they weren't so sure anymore. And then there's RED40, which may accelerate the appearance of immune system tumors in mice. 
And Blue 2 has been linked to brain tumors in animal studies. The folks over at the Center for Science and Public Interest put these reports out there, and they're based on the results from the studies that the chemical industry itself conducted. Then there's the whitening agent titanium dioxide. It was banned in Europe after the European Food Safety Authority found it no longer safe because of hundreds of studies showing that it was genotoxic. In simple terms, it has the ability to mess with DNA, which can lead to cancer. Professor Majed Yonez, an expert of food additives and flavoring, said, Taking into account all available scientific studies and data, the panel concluded that titanium dioxide can no longer be considered safe as a food additive. And if you live in the US, beware that you might be consuming titanium dioxide and not know it. As the FDA allows it to be listed as artificial color, artificial color added, or colors added on food labels. Here's the bottom line. The limited studies that have been done on food dyes have mainly been done on animals. And although cancer has been found in some results, the food industry states that there's no link to cancer in humans and more research is needed. Perhaps they're right, but I'm a tad skeptical, especially with something as important as protecting my family's health. I prefer to steer clear and eat real food instead. And when it comes to coloring food, look for colors derived from beetroots, carrots, spinach, or berries. And let us know in the comments below any foods that you know of that contain potentially harmful food colorings. However, when it comes to cancer-causing foods, it's not only color you need to watch out for. Flavor could be even worse. But before we reveal that, if you want to learn more about the disastrous effects of our modern world on health and discover what's really driving heart disease, diabetes, autoimmune disease and obesity, then get free instant access to the Longevity Code documentary series, featuring dozens of doctors and health experts from around the world and packaged into seven episodes of exclusive video footage. Plus get digital copies of The Art of Sleep and The Obese Brain Books. Just click the link in the description below. Food manufacturers love to slap the sugar-free label on products. However, these products are often packed with some pretty sketchy artificial sweeteners that could be linked to cancer too. The WHO's International Agency for Research on Cancer is now classifying aspartame as a carcinogen, meaning it's capable of causing cancer, specifically liver cancer. Today's reports, which suggest the sweetener could be labeled possibly carcinogenic, refer to the World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer. Most airlines require or strongly discourage pilots from using it because of the risk of seizures and loss of consciousness. Before they fly. Before they fly, yes. The International Agency for Research on Cancer labels aspartame as a possible carcinogen to humans. So it's not a clear-cut yes but their response certainly isn't convincing me to guzzle down aspartame-laced drinks. And then there's sucralose, an artificial sweetener made by reacting sugar with chlorine. And studies done in Europe showed that rats developed leukemia and related blood cancers after eating sucralose. However, when it comes to making food taste irresistible, fake flavoring is where food manufacturers try to pull a fast one on all of us. They know that listing chemicals on food labels, like these hard to pronounce words, will put people off their products. So instead, they conveniently disguise potentially harmful ingredients on labels as natural flavors. Here's where the trickery lies. The root of these flavors has to come from either a plant or an animal. Sounds harmless, right? However, once the original flavor is in place, Manufacturers have the green light to mix virtually anything they desire, including any array of chemicals you've probably never heard of, such as synthetic preservatives, solvents, emulsifiers, and modifiers. They can add different chemicals to these natural products to get that flavor out of there. Wait a minute, they're adding chemicals to natural? Yes, they, are. they are. Natural flavors are one of the most um, evil ingredients, I believe, in her, our food supply because wow. it trick your brain. I think they're using a play on words to sell a product. It, yeah, I'm gonna be natural. Shockingly, only 10 to 20% of the natural flavor is derived from anything natural. 
And to make matters worse, sometimes natural flavors can even have more harmful chemicals than artificial ones. You see, flavoring is big business too. The top four big players globally generate annual sales of close to $24 billion a year. And their goal is to make foods taste so good, you get hooked. Addiction. Exactly. You'll try to create an addictive taste. It's a good word. With the tobacco industry to make cigarettes addictive, they're using those same um, scientists to make food addictive too. And that's going to continue when the federal government doesn't enforce, uh, keep the food industry under control. They're going to try everything they can to trick us into buying their products. We're living in a food carnival. These flavors are so stimulating. They hijack our brain. Fake flavors are essentially chemical concoctions whipped up in a lab designed to create addictive like eating behavior. But are these chemicals really safe? In the US, the FDA was forced to ban six chemicals used in synthetic flavors due to pressure from the National Resources Defense Council, who showed undeniable evidence that these chemicals cause cancer in animals. The council stated, Our petition laid out the science linking these flavoring chemicals to cancer in animals. And although this would seem like a national emergency, the FDA gave manufacturers two years to remove these chemicals from their artificial flavors. This is what's wrong with our food system. Food companies are allowed to continue selling products with ingredients known to cause cancer in animal studies without even warning the public. So if you know of any foods that we need to be careful of, please comment below to help us all out. Now I'm not saying that all food companies are bad or all products are harmful. What I'm trying to highlight is the lack of transparency in our food system and how it can potentially affect our health. However, when it comes to cancer risk, there's one ingredient lurking in bread that you need to be careful of. Potassium bromate is a suspected carcinogen that's banned for human consumption in Europe as well as China and India. Potassium bromate is a possible cancer-causing chemical added to bread. And you might be surprised to know that several countries have outright banned it. The likes of Brazil, Canada, the entire European Union and the UK. And here's where things get interesting. Despite all these health concerns surrounding potassium bromate, it's still legally used in the US. In fact, the FDA hasn't taken another look at it since way back in 1973. Studies on animals show they developed cancer of the thyroid, kidney, and other vital organs when they consumed potassium bromate. One stating, the present study showed that potassium bromate is carcinogenic in the rat kidney, thyroid, and mesothelium and is a renal carcinogen in the male mouse. However, the food industry argues that it's not a problem in bread as it gets converted to potassium bromide, a harmless substance when it's cooked. However, a study done in the UK seemed to show that this is not always the case. They found that of the six unwrapped breads tested, all contained potassium bromate, and seven out of 22 wrapped breads also did. And California seems to agree as it's been on the state's Proposition 65 list for some time. Listed as causing cancer. But it's not only bread you might want to be concerned about. Some breakfast sausages, drink mixes, pizza and bagels have preservatives just as sinister lurking in them. BHA, for example, has been linked to endocrine disruption, which can increase your risk of cancer. In fact, the International Agency for Research on Cancer deems it as possibly carcinogenic in humans. And the US Department of Health and Human Services states that it's reasonably anticipated to be a human carcinogen. And then there's propyl paraben that's known to mess with your hormones and may be especially dangerous for children. For more of the dangerous effects on parabens, be sure to watch our other video, Fertility Killer. But it's not just hormonal trouble you might be concerned about. One study on mouse found that at levels the FDA deems as human acceptable daily intake, propyl paraben mess with gene expression and increase growth of tumors. And the list of foods that contain it is long. Think muffins, cheesecake, donuts, trail mixes, and cookies. The good news is that some governments are starting to push back against big food manufacturers. 
In California, new legislation is currently being assessed that would prohibit foods for sale containing red dye 3, titanium dioxide, potassium bromate, brominated vegetable oil, and propyl paraben. The ban could mean the long goodbye not just for Skittles, but also for Trident gum and Campbell's soup and even some bread brands. Now, in a statement, Gabriel said Californians shouldn't have to worry that the food they buy in their neighborhood grocery store might be full of dangerous additives or toxic chemicals. If you enjoyed this video, could you do us a favor and click the subscribe image on the screen now? And be sure to watch our other video, Deadly Wheat, where we expose the disturbing health dangers of eating modern wheat by clicking the other image on the screen now.